Hello YouTube, welcome to Trapper Rod's Outdoor Pursuits. We're on day two of our beaver trapping expedition out here at the City Lake. Uh, we've caught a few nice beavers. We're going to do some remakes, but I wanted to uh, talk to you today about some of the equipment that we're going to use today. Uh, I said we'd show you basic sets on the last video, and we're going to extend that. We're going to show you a runway set. Uh, beavers, when they come out of a lodge, they'll have this bowl, this little like a like almost like a slide at a water park and it'll be really hard on the bottom and that's how you know you're in that in that beaver run we're going to use these long stabilizers on a 330 cotton bear we'll show you how that works real quick get your cotton bear get it set Make sure your safeties are slid down when we're working with this. And then we're going to take this, we're going to slide it on the outside of these springs. We're going to just slide it right on down. And the way this works is this H bar here sets into the mud, and this sets up off the mud a little bit. And when the beaver swims through that, we got him. We're going to do two of these in that run. And we're also going to use another type of conibear stabilizer, which is this type of a conibear stabilizer. There's half a dozen different kinds of conibear stabilizers out there, but this one works a little bit differently. It works on the tension of the trap. We'll clear some of this out of the way and get this conibear up off of this stake stabilizer. And just because we can, we're going to get our conibear safety out. And we're going to put the safety on this since we're going to be working around our, with our hands. All right. So before you set this trap with this type of an H-type stabilizer, before you set it, you're going to bring it in. Oh, I can't use the safety on that. It's got two bars there, and it's got one little spring clip here. You get that above there, and you can see how it puts tension on your jaws. And then you set that. That, that this thing stabilizes. You push those down into the mud or into the ground, and that's how you stabilize that trap. I, on all of mine, I go to the dollar store and I get their little dollar six foot cable chain lead for a dog. And I only use this, I don't use this to hold animals. I only use this to hold stabilizers and different things, two traps. Then I'll come up here, flip that on there, and this trap is ready to go. We'll go ahead and put our safety on it. We'll get our other safety set, and we'll set that to the side. Pushes into the ground like that. The other thing you saw us use yesterday was a foothold trap. I got CDR 7.5s, I've got some uh, MB6 750s, I've got all kinds of different mix of traps in there. Let's get some bridgers. This is an MB750. It's a it's a nice trap, uh, good sized beaver trap. But I we're not going to set this one today. But I wanted to show you the components of what I put in my kit to get ready to set them. I make my drowner rods out of half inch rebar and uh, I make my drowner uh, locks out of about eighth of an inch bar steel that you make or that you get at the hardware store and this is one of my 330 seconds I'm moving over to the 1 8 because the 1 8 cable is a little more durable so I've got a one foot stake here I've gone to about an 18 inch stake because I've been trapping at a duck club that has a really, really soft bottom. You make a couple of bins, and I put a swivel in it, just for safety's sake, just so the animal can't twist this cable up as much. And then I have about 12 feet of cable that goes out to the end 
This one has a loop on it. Some of them have a little snap hook on it. I fill this bag with mud and rocks, and then I tie that with a wire, tie that to it, stretch it out, and that's my grounder. The other pieces of equipment well, you'll see us use there are these long gloves. Some people use the shorter ones. I like the longer ones, and they don't come with this bungee in the middle of them, but I like to put the bungee in them so you can just kind of hang them around your neck. You can pull them off, do things that you need to do without the gloves on, then slide your hands back into them. So there's a little bit of an equipment review for today. This is going to be on part two of beaver trapping, beaver trapping basics. And uh, we're going to show you a couple more different sets. We're going to show you a caster mound set with a conibear, and we're going to show you a uh, runway set with these two long stabilizers. So that's what you're going to see on this video, and we'll explain it when we get down there exactly what we're doing. All right, we're going to do a remake on this beaver caster mount set that Caleb set yesterday. The beaver drug the uh, bag up from the bottom of the lake. Uh, we're going to remedy that, and I'll show you how to, a little trick to the trade to remedy that. Uh, you can put more weight in the bag, but we've got a rather large rock in this bag already. So this ground's all torn up. It's got a lot of beaver scent on it. So what we need to do is basically reestablish a slide area, something that looks a little different than the surrounding area. So we're going to slick this bank up, and then we're going to get a good handful of mud and stuff, and that's going to be our little caster mound spot. Yeah, we don't want that grass in there, we want more mud. You don't want all mud, you want a little bit of vegetation in it, because that's what they get if you see one of their sets. And this will give this set plenty of eye appeal. We want to go back out here. We want to find our grounding rod and make sure that it's still good and stuck down in there, and it is. And then we'll find our old trap bed and dig it out. This is in about this much water. A beaver should float right over the top of it. He should come to ground right about here set his back foot down and that's what we're hoping for is a nice back foot catch like we had on that first beaver so this is a bridger number five you always tilt this outside jaw up on these on these springs on a uh, mb750 it's not really possible to do but on these ones that have a loose jaw Always tip that jaw up when you set them, and that way you don't get your fingers in the jaws. We come down until you get that click. Then we grab it by the springs. We go down, we find our trap bed. And we get it good and bedded down in that trap bed. You want it, doesn't have to be bedded quite as good as a coyote trap, but you definitely don't want it to wobble. Then, Since this big rock in this bag is not necessarily heavy enough, what we're going to do is we're going to set a drowning pole out here. So we take our bag, we slowly drag it out. We're at about thigh high water, which should be plenty enough to drown a beaver. Then we take our grounding pole, and we stake it in the ground right next to that bag. That one's not going out too good. Let's try here. There. That's a better spot. Must have been on a rock. The beaver will come out. He'll start swimming around, wrap himself around this grounding, grounding pole, and he'll be right here in the morning. And that's a remake on that caster bound set. Now we're going to remake this... Uh, little runway slash caster set that we set with a 330 yesterday it connected on a young beaver we're going to reset it but today instead of using the sticks to stabilize it we're going to use a commercial stabilizer in this series you'll probably see at least a couple more different kinds of stabilizers <clears throat> this is one of them I, I like these they keep the trap pretty well solid 
Uh, they're good for land as well as in water. Uh, they do a fine job of stabilizing the uh, conibear trap. There, we got the trap set. Make sure that our safeties are on before we take our fingers off of it. Aha. Uh -huh. Turn that around. Make it easier. And then we pinch it onto this stabilizer. And it holds by that string or that spring. And then we find the hole that it likes to go in. Sometimes they don't like to go in that that bottom, that, that toughest hole. But we do this, we take our little piece of cable with a clip on it. We clip that somewhere on that chain so it doesn't get lost in the mud when you make a catch. Because once that comes off there, that stabilizer is going to be loose. But we've got it tethered via this little 16th inch cable. We got it tethered right in here. We take our other safeties off. We work this down into the bottom. Uh, we may have to work that down a little further. that down into there where that trap is mostly submerged and we grab just a couple of little pieces of sticks or brush or things and kind of put over it camouflage it just here so the beaver knows that there's an obstruction that they got to swim under and that's all there is to that we're going to relure this so that the beaver doesn't uh recognize this smell or it gets a nice strong fresh smell from last night and there ought to be another beaver here in the morning all right whenever beavers come in and out of a lodge or if they're going from one place to the other and they do it often enough they make a runway and the way you can tell you're in the bottom of the runway is up here it's really squishy mud but right down here it's really light mud and if you can see my knee going up it goes down into a U shape and then it comes up drastically on the other side. So what you do is you get one of these long stabilizers, you wire them together so this can't come off, and you, well, first you take the safeties off so that you can actually catch the beaver when it comes through. Then you find the very bottom of that, that, that run and you just push that down in until it stops. So we're going to put one run set here we're going to put one run set right in front of it. We'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. So we've got our beaver run set up. We've got this trap set right here. It's about four feet from this other one. We've got it fenced off just a little bit right to the, to the left of that. And towards the bank is where the beavers are coming in and out of that lodge. So we've got one chance to catch him and one another can chance to catch him. If a beaver gets in this one, the beaver will come on through, drop back down to the bottom, and get caught in this one. That's how you set up a run. If you've got a long run and you know you've got a big family of beavers, you can set up three, four, five traps in a row and give yourself more chances to catch more beavers out of that colony before they get wised up and figure out something's trying to catch them. All right, I set this up for people in states that... Uh don't have to have their conibears completely submerged. You always got to check your local game laws and check. But one of the ways that uh, the big conibear trappers, you guys that catch a lot of beaver and conibears, they say to make an X over the top of your trap, make an X over where you want that beaver to swim. And I guess beavers over their lifetime figure out that if they've got a limb coming this way and a limb coming this way, that under those two limbs is going to be the clearest way for them to go. So when you set your traps up, and this one, again, is for demonstration purposes, because here in Missouri, this would not be a legal set. Uh, it, whether it's all the way under the water or half submerged, whatever your local laws are, set it up like this. If these two are sticking out of the water just right here, that beaver will pick that spot to go under. 
And uh, that's a little trick tip for your cotta bear trapping. We're gonna set a little bit of caster up here. If we were making this set, we'd put a little caster up there to draw them up and we'd leave it just like this. Well, thanks for coming by Trapper Rod's Outdoor Pursuits. We got some beavers here out of this lake. We showed you a couple more different ways to set traps uh, with your cotta bear traps. And uh, we showed you how to remake a, a caster mound set and uh, how to use a drowned pole. Uh, that'll be it for part two. Part three, we may get into a few more different kinds of cotta bear stabilizers. There's a dozen different kinds out there and we'll uh, check our traps tomorrow and maybe make another set or two and uh, have fun out here on the trap line. Thanks for coming by Trapper Rod's Outdoor Pursuits and God bless you.